All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show. New coach of George Mason, Tony Skin, going back to his alma model he played at. Brother Tony, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Doing good. Just uh, just another day in Fairfax, man. Doing well. I hear that, man. And man, how does it feel to be back home, man? You know, you played there um, before you went to play ball over in Europe there, man. So how does it feel coming back after – you know, 17 years, man, back back to where you play, where you got kind of grew as a man into. Yeah, it's uh <clears throat> it's a uh it's an unbelievable feeling. It's a you know, I've been here now two months plus, and I'm still every day I wake up, I'm like, man, I I can't believe I got this job. I actually found a picture that I tweeted um earlier today. I found a picture of me literally <laughs> when I was a baby here and uh wow. It just kind of took it back, man, because again, when I first arrived on this campus um, in 2004, um, I really didn't have any type of idea what uh, was in store for me, man. And so to see that full circle 17 years later, man, it's um, it's an honor, it's a blessing, and um, I'm just, you know, living in the moment. I hear that, Tony, man. Let me ask you this, man. You know, um, what made you want to get into coaching? You know, my dad's a coach. He's 84 years old in August, man. He still has his legal pads out, taking notes. We watch games. So he's talking about, you know, side, pick and roll, drop. We, 84 years old, he's still a lot of too, Tony. So what made you want to get into coaching, man? I know my dad said so he wanted to help young men in Atlanta and help grow young men in, 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 into successful guys in society. So what kind of got you want to get into coaching? Man, you, after, you know, after, after your career playing. You know, you know what's crazy is that – um. The honest truth is I, I didn't have a plan to get into coaching. Um, I was very, very fortunate um, going into um, my eighth year as a professional. I had just signed a two-year deal um, to go play in the Ukraine um, in the EuroLeague. So, you know, highest level in Europe and, you know, for some really, really good money right after the uh, 2012 um, Olympics. And uh, my career was just right there where, you know, you know, you play another four or five years at that level, make that type of money, you really can transition into kind of whatever you want. Um, but I ended up getting hurt three weeks later after signing that contract in the Olympics. And it was a major, major injury that I really just couldn't transition from. Um, but through my rehab, um, I just kind of started volunteering, um, you know, at a high school, then also AAU wise. And it, it literally just clicked like overnight, like, you know what? I think it's about that time to try to figure something else out. You know, it's just, it's that transition that, you know, we all go through it as athletes, um, as professionals. Um, you, you never really know what you want to do when you're transitioning out of something. Um, and especially for, for, for us as basketball players, when, you know, 29, 30, 31, whatever it is, if you're blessed to be able to play that long, that transition does happen. And for me, it was coaching. You know, once I, I got in the gym and I felt my comfort zone being in the gym with those guys, um, I knew what I could bring to the table and, you know, I just kind of just made that decision and just ran with it. No doubt, man. I feel you on that. I know for me, it was 2009 getting cut from the NFL. I said, I mean, I gotta, I can't keep doing this. I gotta, I gotta do something. I yeah. didn't want to get a, a, a nine to five per se. So yeah. the radio has been my thing the last 14 years. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's what's up, man. You know, that, that being, being able to, find that niche, being able to, you know, reinvent them yourself, you know, that's a whole nother skill set, you know? Yeah, I think it was good for me, Tony, because, you know, my dad's a coach and I played. So, like, I didn't listen to the of a player and a coach because I, I grew up with a coach and I played. Yeah. And I know, and I know, and <laughs> I would never ask you guys questions that I know I would want to answer as a player or a coach. <laughs> so, like, and we have that perspective <laughs> in, in this space, like, you know, it's different. A lot of you guys, who, who report on the game ain't, ain't pick up the ball in, in, in the live. So, I don't think that's yeah, what <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> you know, man. And I'm asking this, man. I know when I got started, brother, I was a co host. So, I don't think mm -hmm. anybody in my head about if I was the main guy, what I would do. So, if he's a assistant coach, how do you prepare yourself to say, hey, if I get my own program, uh, being, loyal, being loyal to your guy still, but if I get a job, how I would do something different based on what he's doing? Yeah, I think everybody's um, everybody's journey is different um, as an assistant coach. Um, you know, some people work in certain places and are assistants, and, and they're just not given uh, um, certain roles. They're not given certain responsibilities. They don't have autonomy. 
that actually exists in the business, whether people want to talk about it or not. Um, but I was fortunate in my path, man, you know, working around some really, really good people, um, but also some really, really good coaches. And that helped me tremendously um, in my growth along the way, just being able to see different things, being put in situations where I had to make decisions, um, especially this, this past year um, at, at the University of Maryland with Coach Willard. Um, I knew that, you know, that door could come knocking um, anytime. And he put me in position to just really, you know, help him um, with that program in year one. And so it, it's never going to be a perfect, oh, I've done this. So I know what to do when I'm, you know, in that first sheet. Um, that's never going to be the case. If, if I told you it was, I'd be lying to you. But being as prepared as possible um, and, and preparation for me is everything. And so going into it, um, you know, you're, you're going to have your turbulence. That's just the normal that's just the normal wear and tear in any business and any profession. But um, regardless, if you've been coaching for 10 years or if you've been coaching for a year, there's going to always be growth. And, you know, that's just kind of my mindset. And Tony, you, you're in a tough league. The A-10 to me, man, is a tough league. And it sucks you only get one bid because it's such good basketball in the A-10, in the A -10, man. It's like it's depth from top to bottom, man. It's just hard. And so many coaches in your league, man. So as you prepare for this, this journey, man, uh, how has it been kind of study it up a little bit on synergy? The guys who you're going up against come come to fall in, in January and February then. Yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, I take things for I take things for what it is one day at a time. Um, this is a tremendous league. I had a uh I had a chance to be a part of um the A10 conference a couple of weeks ago where, you know, for me, um, especially probably being one of the youngest guys in the room, I got a chance to see some of these old vets that I've watched not only as a coach, but even some that I watched coach when I was a player. Um, and so it's always, it's always the, uh, a different light button that comes on in my head because I have to switch um, my mindset. You know, as a player, you know, you control different things in different ways. Um, but now as a coach, it's a, it's a little bit different where you have to, you know, how can I say this respectfully? You know, with all due respect, I'm here to compete. And no so... Doubt the um the fandom goes out of the window um and so again like you said it's a, a tremendous tremendous league i have all the respect um for this league you know i was i was playing professionally i believe or no i had just retired when they transitioned from the caa um to the to, to the a10 um and to see the growth and just the additions to this league i'm i'm excited about it um but like i said it's it's one day at a time, man. We got 13 games before we get into that gauntlet. And so man, yeah. you got to stay focused on that. <laughs> no doubt, brother. No doubt. And, and how has it been recruiting wise in DMV? Because since you are, nobody can describe it as being a, being a patriot but you. You are doing basically a patriot through and through and through. Nobody can say you know, how to do it better than you, man. So how's it been recruiting DMV area, looking look for talent there? And also, why you've been so close to DC and the DMV, getting guys on national scale to want to come there and play and get those internships, get those network connections, because that's important. All, as you know, you know, I both know very well, everybody's not going not gonna, to not gonna go play pro ball. So he had to have some fall back on too. So being in that area, being a connect to get things with the government, the people, all that area, man. We're opportunity for, for, for a young man. Yeah, no, it's um, it's been it's been a culmination of just all the things that I've kind of experienced at 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 different levels. Um, you know, my first job was at Louisiana Tech in 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 North Louisiana and in Ruston, Louisiana, and you know I didn't have any type of navigation or what to do um, when I first got that job. Um, but I figured it out real quick <laughs> and, you know, there's a certain work, work ethic that you have to have in figuring those things out. And again, that was one of the reasons I was able to make a jump, um, and it through the profession, just because of my work ethic and some of the things that I was able to get done and people started to notice. And so you fast forward that to now being here at home in my comfort zone in the very rich DMV. Um, you know, there's, I've said this all the time and I'll continue to say it there. There's a little piece of um talent for everybody in this area you know whether it's gw whether it's georgetown maryland um american howard you know the list goes on and on but you know we, we we've gotten a chance to and a lot of credit goes to my staff and and really doing the unthinkable in april with nine scholarships um and the portal land that we live in in the nil space that we live in it's just a culmination of different things that if you don't have a good staff um, if you if you're not in a good location where people actually know you, um, it makes things so much harder that that wasn't the case for us. Um, 
know, a lot of people are obviously familiar with George Mason and what we did years back. And to be able to tie that back into somebody that represents that, it makes the conversation in recruiting a little bit easier. Um, I'm, not, I'm not selling something that I don't know. I'm not selling something that wasn't accomplished. Um, and like you mentioned, you know, my, my goal is um, to mentor these guys that, that, that come walking in the door because, you know, if I can do it, you know, somebody else can do it as well. And I think that's just been the biggest piece for us um, in our message, especially in this DMV area um that you know that's that's the kind of guys that we're looking for and we've been good with it we were able to bring in some really really good pieces in april at this level where you know typically you get like one maybe two if you're lucky of those pieces um i think we got six seven really really good pieces so it's been um it's been awesome for us no doubt tony and and for your, your guys' workouts, man, uh, how are those been for you guys or see kind of what you have to work with, get guys at Carmarty? Because I always felt, Tony, I got better when I was in Nashville, not down here when I'm home by myself. So when I was up yeah. in Tennessee, I was always more focused with my guys on my craft and catching balls and getting better. But then mm -hmm. down here, it's like I'm still with my homies. You know, so how has that been getting you in the guys together? <laughs> nah, it's been, been, been them bonds. It's been great, man. Like you said, you know, I know when I played that the rules weren't, it didn't allow for coaches um, to have us in the summer. So if you weren't, if you weren't um, individually motivated, you know, it just all depends on what you was doing with your summer. And um, actually that's what made us good in that 2006 years, because, you know, as locals, we love competing against everybody else in the city. So we would go from different gyms, to go work out things of that nature, but that landscape has kind of changed. And obviously the rules of us being able to be with them, um, for eight weeks in the summer makes a huge difference. Um, we got started out yesterday. So yesterday was our first day. I'm sorry, Monday was our first day. Um, and, you know, we've gone two days straight. They have a day off today on Wednesday. We'll go again tomorrow, and then we'll do some conditioning on Friday. But the first two days has been awesome. Um, you know, guys are out of shape, as they should be this time of the year. Um, but getting a chance to get in the gym and just, you know, that's church for us. You know, I I'm going to be big on individual work and, um, you know, got a chance to see, you know, different guys for the first time outside of, um, you know, obviously what we watched on, on, on film, because we have all basically with the exception of Austin ball, we all have, uh, transfers and returners. Um, so I haven't had a chance to really see each guy, um, in their element, but we've had that in the last 48 hours and it's been, it's been cool. We've had some fun and we're just going to continuously to use that time, um, to just get better and learn, um, you know, kind of our system and who we are. No doubt. And, and for scheduling wise, being the A10, uh, how was it trying to do a non conference schedule, trying to get guys to come play trail place, not be on the road so much? I don't know if the owner can make too many money games per se, but how was that being trying to make the schedule? I know a lot of them probably done for you this year at least, but how's it being to try to schedule down, down the road? Yeah, scheduling is not, it's just complicated, man, because I've been on the other side of it. Um, yeah, I spent the last two years in the Big Ten and prior to that, for three years, I was in the Big East. And so um, I understand the value of buying games. Um, I understand being, you know, right in the middle, which which I think we are. Um, and the truth of the matter is, you know, the more additions we keep adding to um, our roster, the less, you know, phone calls um, <laughs> that are being returned. You know what I mean? So no it's, uh, it's, um, it's definitely a day-to-day, -day, you know, credit goes out to, um, you know, Mark, who's kind of kind of handling our schedule, uh, my director of operations. But, you know, it's 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 coming along. We're, we're probably two or three games away from finishing our schedule, um, you know, but it's not anything new. You know, pretty much everybody at this level in this league goes through the same thing, man. You're trying to get some competitive guys to um, come on your floor. Um, but then you're also trying to challenge your team as well to go on the road. Um, I, I would say that locally, the one thing that, um, you know, I'd love to see. And again, this is unfair because I was on the other side of it and my um, my thought process might have been a little bit different. But, you know, I would love to see some, um, you know, some local competition. Let's just say that. Yeah, no doubt. I could see like I have at the Capital One Center, you know, a day of just four games of DMV team. Which a lot you, of sound, you, sound, you sound like a DMV guy because something like that did exist back when I played in 2005 and six. It was called a BB&T Classic. And what it was, well, it was just a combination of all the local schools, regardless of the level. We all played two games in those um, 
in those two or three days. And it was really competitive. Um, you, you know, we it brought the city out and, you know, I, I'd love to go back to that, but you know, who am I, who am I to say that as a first year coach, man? <laughs> Well, you know, I'm trying to do a M MTE here in Atlanta, so I'm kind of in that okay. space myself already. I'm trying to do MTE down here for, you know, maybe we can get Clark to play Tennessee State, my alma mater, or Morehouse. So I'm trying to do some things around MTEs in Atlanta. So my mind kind of goes there. Like, why can't we have Georgia State, Kennesaw State play in Mercer? So, yeah, that's always in my mind. So when you said it, I'm like, yes. It makes sense to me, but I know yeah. how some people are about not wanting to lose games to certain people on a new new, new, new slight. I yeah. know that too. That's been yeah. something I've been told. Well, we play them there, they have a chance to beat us. <coughs> Why come beat you? Yeah, yeah. You know, I wish it was a simple solution, man. But I, you know, I get I've been on both sides of it. And, you know, our goal is to just get as many competitive games as, as we can get and whoever wants to play us, you know, that's um that's just kind of where the ball drops. No doubt, man. I'm ask his brother. Um, last one I got for you, Atlanta. What is your favorite thing about coming to Atlanta? And uh, also, talk about the talent here in Atlanta for recruiting wise. There's a lot of talent here in my backyard. Talk about the city of Atlanta in general. How, how much you like it and talent here for you guys to kind of pluck from and pick from? Yeah, no, I think Atlanta's um, Atlanta's a major hub, and I think Atlanta's a city where you know, just like the DMV, you, you have a lot of people that come through the DMV to recruit guys. Um, I think Atlanta's right up that same, um, you know, right up that same conversation. Like I said, I spent my first three years at um, Louisiana Tech. And when you're at a mid-major like that, where you're driving everywhere, you got to be able to find like that major city um, that you can get some, you know, you get some stuff done at. And, you know, fortunately for me, I was able to build some relationships in Atlanta. And so Atlanta actually became, um, so you can say my, my, my bread and butter outside of the DMV. And so, you know, over the years, I've been in Atlanta recruiting, again, whether it's at some of the smaller events, um, some of the more, um, I don't even know what you call it, some of the uh, independent events, um, you know, again, whether it's on, on the radar or whatever else that may be going on down there, Atlanta's been pretty good to me. I've recruited at, you know, several high schools. Um, I actually had, for a couple of years, I had a, I had a role in that Green Forest when Green Forest was rolling, um, as they still are. Um, I recruited the kid Ike Obiagu, who went to Green Forest, played with the Georgia Stars, uh, went to Florida State, and then ended up transferring to us um, uh, at Seton Hall. And then also, we also just signed this year, Amari Kelly, who's at, I believe, I can't remember what high school Amari Kelly was at, but he played with Stackhouse Elite. So there's a lot of interrelationships down there that I have in Atlanta. So I, um, I love Atlanta, man. And, you know, not to mention the culture, man, when you come down there. Um, it's a good, it's a good place. Now I will tell you this, Tony. Oh, um, this show has gotten guys recruits. I can tell you that they, they told me as much. Guys saw the coach on my show. We decided to, and they, when they called him, oh, I know the boss man show. So yeah, he <laughs> you cool. So I will tell you, guys get gotten guys to commit them on the show. I can tell you that it'd be West Coast, Northeast. It's happening, brother. Trust me, over. I tell you that guys to the show they. They see you, they want to come join you, man. Well, I need to just go ahead and throw that, throw that live, man. <laughs> throw the live. Hey, fellas, my man Tony Skin, hey, you hear him on the show. If he, if he calls you, hits you up, get that man a hop to the DMV, a great, a great town. See, come on right there for you, promo right there for you, my brother. I was ask you real quick, Tony. Um, when you was in Rustin, man, did y'all play Grambling? It's right, right down, down the road. Did y'all play them any? Um, you know what, man, you taking it back. I'm getting old because I believe. We, uh, I can't remember, man. It was, I believe we might have played Grambling. Grambling, like you said, Grambling and Ruston, it's the same damn city. Um, there's literally one mile that separates the campus. Um, and I was always at Grambling because we would take some of the recruits there um, and vice versa. And I had a really good relationship with the coach there that was there at the time and even the new coach um, that's there now. Um, I want to say we might have played Grambling on a neutral floor, though. We might have played Grambling in uh, in Shreveport. I got to fact check that. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, I know been I know I've been on Grambling a few times uh, myself. You know, it's like and I know you, it's right there. It's literally it's right it's there. Right, it's literally right there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah it's sure. like it's like the little hub right there. You know, and fellas want to go down and get you a have your queen right down the street, brother. <laughs> you know, get your queen down the street. You want to get your. Hey, queen. that's a good way. That's a good way to put it, right? That's, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> you want you to have your queens down the street. He never yeah, rolled sure. You found you. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, man, it's been fun to catch up with you. Told it was fun, man. I'll see you in the, in the ATL, my brother. Not for sure, man. I appreciate you having me on. Anytime. All right.